Uh, the fact is that the Palestinians have lived under occupation and Gaza uh, not has under been... occupation. They it, have they, their own they state. Are, they have, the Gaza that's nonsense. Is, is, is a state that's nonsense. and it is and run by Hamas and they had one election, the which is, as Trevor the people, said, the people the, voted for Hamas. Hamas then killed the other, the opposition and they've never had an election right. since. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we are going to be checking out a video titled Douglas Murray Shut Up arrogant muslim girl with fat on islam brutality oh, wow i believe this is going to be another interesting one let's check it out go douglas murray took on the topic of the israel palestine conflict with the same incisive clarity and unapologetic stance that has earned him a prominent place in contemporary political discourse joined by labor mp rushanara ali Murray went into the complexities of the ongoing strife in Gaza, offering a perspective that was both critical and compelling. Roshanar Ali, is there anything realistically that the West, the European Union, the British government can actually do to solve this conflict? Well, we need the European Union and including the British government to work together uh, to show leadership and also to act as an honest broker. And what we've seen yet again is that Israel has shown complete disregard for humanitarian issues. Um, some 600 people are now dead, mainly civilians, uh, 100,000 seeking refuge. And we need the European Union to be a strong voice in recognising, of course, Israel needs to maintain its security. The debate kicked off with a straightforward question aimed at Ali. What can the European Union and the British government realistically do to resolve the Israel-Palestine conflict? Apart from anything else, the uh, very muted response, and indeed in many cases a very encouraging response for Israel from the international community, is I think testament to the fact that it is playing not just by the rules but by the most stringent rules imaginable. The reason why uh, the casualties exist in the Gaza is obviously because Israel is trying as an operational objective to stop Hamas and other jihadist groups from firing rockets mm. into Israel. In order to do that, Israel is carrying out a very, very targeted campaign. Now, it is inevitable in that that, that civilians are going to be killed as well. And one of the reasons why that is happening... So excuse me, if I'm just finished. But as soon as Douglas Murray took the floor, the debate took a sharp turn. With his characteristic precision, Murray dismantled Ali's arguments piece by piece, bringing a much-needed dose of reality to the conversation. One of the reasons why that's, it's targeted, because they are trying to get the launch pads for the, from the, that the rockets are coming from. Now, one of the reasons why there is a problem from this, of course, killed. is that Hamas has, and incidentally CNN has the tape of this, among others, uh, has been encouraging the people of Gaza to, quote, protect the houses of Hamas commanders, to actually congregate around areas which the Israelis have dropped leaflets and texted civilians to say this area is going to be hit. Hamas has actually tried to maximise the casualties. So that's the first point. As for how this is to be stopped, I think there's a very important thing that we do not, in, in the international community, does not simply perpetuate this conflict. Murray started by rejecting the notion that Israel had disregarded humanitarian and international law. He argued that Israel was not only following the rules, but adhering to the most stringent standards imaginable. Murray highlighted the operational necessity behind Israel's actions, targeting Hamas and other jihadist groups to stop the rocket fire into Israel. In trying to stop Israel from achieving the operational objective of stopping the rocket fire, the it, international. Right. This is how. This is the third right. time now that this has happened. Well, and I would suggest it's more than the that, third time. No, actually, the third there time has been this exchange since 2007. Right. He made it clear that civilian casualties, while tragic, were an unavoidable consequence of such targeted operations. The real kicker was when Murray pointed out that Hamas deliberately maximizes these casualties by encouraging civilians to protect Hamas commanders' homes and congregate in areas targeted by Israel. This tactic, Murray argued, was a cynical ploy by Hamas to exploit the humanitarian crisis for propaganda. A curve that Israelis went through when, after the withdrawal from Gaza in 2005, they got not peace from Gaza but rocket fire, thousands and thousands of rockets. So what they've been trying to do since is to stop the rocket fire. And as I say, since 2007, and Hamas... Uh, did a coup, a military coup in the Gaza and killed their fellow Palestinians from Fatah and other parties. The Israelis have, on three major occasions now, gone in. Now, the problem with this is that the international community tends to allow Israel some weeks in order to achieve the operational objective. Mm. They're and going then, to lose then, international support, exactly. aren't they? Now, 
Murray's arguments were steeped in the harsh realities of Israel's security needs. He reminded the audience of the historical context. After Israel's withdrawal from Gaza in 2005, instead of peace, they faced thousands of rockets from Gaza. This, Murray emphasised, was the backdrop against which Israel's current actions must be understood. They now, the, the, and the crucial thing, just to add on this, is it is very important that Israel is allowed to win at some point. The international community is quite good at prolonging the conflict precisely by All not right. allowing Israel to achieve what its does operational a, What objective. does a win look like in, in this case? I mean, can there ever be a military solution to this problem of particularly Gaza and Israel rather than the West Bank and Israel? It's a platitude, but it happens to be true here. There are going to be no winners here, whatever the outcome. He criticised the international community for prolonging the conflict by not allowing Israel to achieve its operational objectives. According to Murray, true peace could only be achieved if Hamas was removed from power, either by the Palestinians themselves or through other means. This was a call for a realistic approach to peace, one that recognised the need for decisive action against those perpetuating violence in some way uh, are now uh, deserve or you know the punishment collective punishment that is now being espoused let me finish let me finish but it's not what i'm saying I, hope, at all. I, hope, I very much hope not but the the point is that this is this cycle of violence is going on and on throughout the debate ali frequently interrupted murray attempting to counter his points but each interruption only served to underscore the strength of Murray's arguments. He remained composed and continued to dismantle Ali's points with factual precision and a calm demeanour. Uh, the fact is that the Palestinians have lived under occupation and Gaza They're not uh, has under been, occupation, they it, have they, their own they state. Are, they have, the Gaza that's nonsense. Is, is a state that's nonsense. and it is and run by Hamas and they had one election. When Ali insisted that Palestinians were living under occupation and suffering due to Israel's actions, Murray countered with a blunt truth. Gaza is not under occupation. It is run by Hamas, a group that seized power through violence and has since maintained its grip by suppressing any opposition. Murray's point was clear. The situation in Gaza is the result of Hamas's actions and its refusal to seek peace. The point Which, is as Trevor people, said, the people the, voted for Hamas. Well, Hamas then killed the other, the opposition, and they've never had an election right. since. But they could have a state. So let's if have, they wanted let, a state, they could have let, a state. Let Rishnara finish her point. One of the most striking moments in the debate was when Murray addressed the fact that the people of Gaza had voted for Hamas. He pointed out the irony that a democratic outcome had led to such dire consequences, with Hamas using its position to perpetuate violence rather than seek peace. This, he argued, was a fundamental issue that needed to be addressed if there was to be any hope of lasting peace. You're saying that they are living the thing under is, occupation. There seems to be a bit of an a bit of amnesia here about the history of what's happening in that region and the fact that Palestinians don't have a state. They have, you know, lived under occupation. They've lived under attack. Murray didn't shy away from the uncomfortable truths. He acknowledged that the people of Gaza had made a choice and now they were living with the consequences of that choice. This wasn't to say that they deserved to suffer, but rather that the international community needed to recognise the root cause of the conflict, Hamas's intransigence and its commitment to violence. And what we need is rapidly, uh, in order to secure peace, uh, which is rapidly eluding uh, uh, this well, region, we, ha we need the international community, we need leaders uh, in America and to European Union to work together precisely? to resume negotiations and to, first of all, bring an end to this conflict. Well, and that's that's in a move that showcased his deep understanding of the broader regional dynamics, Murray brought Egypt into the conversation. He noted that Egypt, like Israel, had a vested interest in controlling the situation in Gaza. The real issue, Murray suggested, was not just about Israel and Gaza, but involved the broader geopolitical dynamics, with Egypt playing a crucial role. And that's the end of the, conf the, end of the conflict will be fastest brought about day. by Hamas being thrown out of the West Bank by the Palestinians of the West Bank, or by any other force uh, available. We've got to remember this. The two-state solution, such as it is, and it's a dream, but it's still a possible dream, if you talk, talk about the West Did Bank. The Murray's point was clear. The simplistic narrative of Israel versus the suffering Palestinians 
ignored the complexities of the situation. It wasn't just Israel that had concerns about Gaza. Egypt was equally wary of the instability and violence emanating from the region. The thing that is a problem and is an irreconcilable problem at the moment is what you do with Hamas, which wants to annihilate the Jewish state and does not want peace. That is a problem. Right. Murray also took aim at the media's portrayal of the conflict. He criticised the tendency to always put Israel in the dock, ignoring the context and complexities of the situation. The truth, according to Murray, was that the people of Gaza had voted for Hamas, knowing full well what Hamas stood for continued conflict with Israel. No, the, the, problem, the, pro, the real problem here is the agenda is now being controlled by people who don't want peace, whether it is the settlers and so West, yeah. uh, West Bank or That's right. it's Hamas. That's, right. That's, That's the problem. Absolutely. How do we wrest the agenda out of the hands of those groups of people who, yeah. by the way, yeah. are not states? Yeah. These are gangs. Mm. Sure, let's, and unfortunately Gaza is run by a gang. Let's, let's leave it there. Said. Thank you both very much. He argued that the media's portrayal of the conflict as a simple case of Israel versus suffering Palestinians was not only misleading but also harmful. It perpetuated a one-sided narrative that ignored the role of Hamas and the broader regional dynamics. But its reaction and response is not proportionate and we need the European Union, including the British government, to speak up and work towards res resuming peace negotiations, which have been completely elusive over recent years. Murray's argument was ultimately a call for realism. He stressed that peace could only be achieved through a realistic understanding of the situation. This meant recognising that Hamas was the primary obstacle to peace and that Israel's actions while regrettable in terms of civilian casualties, were a necessary response to the continuous threat posed by Hamas. Death of so many people, particularly Palestinians, of course there have been casualties on the Israeli side as well, but the vast majority have been uh, Palestinians, um, won't secure Israel, uh, won't provide long-term security. He called on the international community to support Israel's right to defend itself and to take a more balanced approach to the conflict. This meant not only criticising Israel's actions, but also holding Hamas accountable for its role in perpetuating the violence. What we need is the international community to work together, but also Israel needs to respect international humanitarian law, international law generally, and that's not happening. Has Israel disregarded um, humanitarian and international law by going into Gaza in the way they have? One of Murray's key points was the importance of allowing Israel to achieve its operational objectives. He argued that the international community's tendency to intervene and pressure Israel to cease its operations only served to prolong the conflict. By not allowing Israel to effectively neutralise the threat posed by Hamas, the international community was perpetuating the cycle of violence. It's a platitude, but it happens to be true here. There are going to be no winners here, whatever the outcome. Uh, I think that, you know, if I can speak personally, my, my heart is rather with what Roshanara says. However, I have two caveats. One is, I really dislike the tendency, particularly from the media here, always to put Israel in the dock. Murray made a compelling case for the need to let Israel win. He argued that true peace could only be achieved if Hamas was removed from power and Israel was able to ensure its security. This, he suggested, was the only way to break the cycle of violence and achieve lasting peace in the region. For those of us who admire Douglas Murray's intellectual rigour and unflinching honesty, this debate was yet another example of why his voice is so crucial in contemporary political discourse. His ability to cut through the noise and present clear, fact-based arguments is a breath of fresh air in a world often dominated by oversimplified narratives and emotional rhetoric. Here, um, the truth of the matter is that the people of Gaza actually voted for Hamas, mm -hmm. and they voted knowing what would happen. Hamas has been very clear. It has no intention of, pay of making peace with Israel. So actually, you know, this is a horrible, cruel thing to say. This is a result of a democratic outcome. And by the way, the, the, the really bigger issue here is Egypt. 
because that's what's really made the big difference here. Murray's stance is not just about supporting Israel or criticising Hamas. It's about advocating for a nuanced understanding of complex issues, where security concerns and humanitarian considerations are balanced. His insistence that the international community must allow Israel to achieve its security objectives is rooted in a broader vision of sustainable peace, one that recognises the realities on the ground rather than being swayed by one-sided narratives. Murray's perspective is a call for a more balanced and realistic approach to the Israel-Palestine conflict. It's a call to recognise the complexities of the situation and to understand that true peace can only be achieved through a clear-eyed understanding of the facts. Wow. What an interesting uh, interaction. I totally relate with the point and the facts that Douglas have stated and with some of the points uh, the politician also stated. Because just by the title, Douglas Murray shut up arrogant Muslim girl with fat on Islam brutality. We all understand that the conflict uh, between Israel, Palestine, Gaza, and to be specific, Hamas, have been going on for quite some time. And as a result of this, a lot of life have been lost in both sides, maybe majorly on the Palestinian people. A lot of Palestinian people have lost their life as compared to those that have lost their life in Israel. And all this is because of the conflict between Israel and Hamas. I really feel pain within me. I feel pain because it's not something easy. Losing your loved ones, losing those that are, that are dear to you is something very painful. I totally sympathize uh, with the people of Palestine. I also sympathize with the people of Israel. And I understand that uh, in war, not to be too emotional, in war people die. And I believe this is uh, the result of the conflict going on between those two countries. And I really feel and wish there is a way this can be settled amicably without losing more lives. And I believe if the international communities can also come in, if Europe, America can also come together, in order to facilitate uh, the two-state solution between Israel and Gaza and Palestine, I believe it's going to do a lot in order to prevent loss of more life and loss of property. And we also understand that the genesis of this whole problem is a mass because Israel actually gave up Gaza in 2005 in order to maintain peace with the people of Palestine. And believe me, according to statistics, about 10,000 Israeli citizens residing in Gaza were forced out of Gaza by, the, by Israel IDF soldiers in order for them to be able to maintain peace uh, with the people of Palestine. And believe me, in 2007, Hamas came into power. Hamas was democratically voted into power by the people of Palestine, by Gaza. And when Hamas came into power, Hamas silenced all the opposition and also violated uh, the two-state agreement Israel had with the people of Palestine. And ever since then, Hamas have been releasing uh, missile into Israel. And as a result of that, Israel trying to defend its people have also retaliated which has led to loss of life. And I feel pain. I feel pain. I really wish there's a way those old conflicts can be settled. This old conflict can be settled. And I understand the public always tend to blame Israel because they feel more lives are being lost in Gaza, more lives are being lost in Palestine. So as a result of that, they tend to blame Israel for, play, for playing victim, which is not true. Israel trying to defend its people has done everything possible 
Israel even uh, invest in bunkers so the civilians can get a place to shield themselves when a uh, missile is released. The civilians can get a place to shield themselves from the attack. But Hamas is not doing the same thing. Instead, Hamas, which is the governance of Gaza, governance of Gaza, is using the civilians as shield instead of protect, protecting the civilians. And that has led to loss of lives. And believe me, Hamas is not only causing harm to the people of Israel, but Hamas is also causing harm to the people of Gaza. Because I believe those people voted them, voted Hamas democratically into power so Hamas can, you know, protect them, so Hamas can, you know, do everything possible to make uh, Gaza a better place to live. But instead, the condition in Gaza have deteriorated ever since Hamas came into power. So I believe Hamas is not looking out for the citizens, just like what we have seen in this video. Before Israel released a missile into Gaza, into Palestine, release or launch an, a, an attack, Israel always alert the civilians to evacuate those areas. Under reasonability, I see no reason why someone uh, that have gotten an information that a missile or a bomb is going to be released in certain location, I see no reason why someone with its right senses will decide to remain in such location. So that is why I, I'm a little bit convinced that Hamas is using the civilians as shield because there's no one in its right senses that have gotten an information that a bomb or a missile is going to be released at a location. Then you strategically position yourself in that location waiting for the for the attack, waiting for the attack. No one in its right senses is going to do that. So I feel Hamas is not doing everything enough. The only way this conflict can be resolved is if Hamas is voted out of power. And I believe that will not be possible because Hamas is always silencing all the opposition unless the international communities, American and Europe, are going to come in order to support for Hamas to be voted out of power out of power because that will be the only solution because i believe Hamas is not going to buy the idea of a two-state solution because they want to eliminate the people of uh israel just what douglas have said in this video i've really learned a lot just listening to douglas and i've seen that uh the mp the lady she's not being totally honest she's not being totally honest she's trying to blame everything on Israel, which I believe is not right. We have to be able to know uh, the, the problem and address it in a fair way without taking sides. But instead, she's trying to support Hamas. She's trying to support Gaza, which I believe that is totally unacceptable. Wow. So I would like to hear your comment regarding the point, the fact that Douglas and the lady have stated. Let's get a conversation rolling. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day.